If you're watching this video on YouTube, just know that I have other videos uh, on Odyssey, uh, BitChute, uh, and maybe other uh, uh, websites uh, as I decide, uh, other than YouTube. Uh, the links are in the down there, down there somewhere, um, to those other uh, channels on those other sites. Um, and I recommend uh, that everybody else start moving away from YouTube as well. Uh, I opened some of these accounts years ago, and uh, only now I'm getting around to using it. So go ahead, and uh, if you want, you can click on the down there and uh, see the other content, which usually mirrors what I have on YouTube. Uh, you can see that stuff if you like, and follow me over there if you like. Uh, anyway, on to the video. Welcome to another video. And in this video, we're going to be going over phased array radar, or antennas, I should say. Uh, and what you may have heard of them before, uh, but, but what what are they used in? Uh, typically, they're used in military applications for uh, air warning radar and so on and so forth. Uh, but you can also find them in, in civilian applications, uh, such as weather radars, um, aircraft that track the aircraft uh, for air traffic control, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, what is a phased array radar, or phased array antenna? Uh, well, to kind of answer that, we have to go back to an older version of, for example, radar. All right? And in an older version, or even today it's still used, but in uh, the older types, older technology, uh, the radar is basically an antenna uh, with a reflector in the back of it that reflects the, the radio energy back uh, forward, uh, and that's fixed. There's only one antenna usually, and it's fixed. Uh, so if you want to move it and, and point that radar at something else, uh, you have to, you have, or if you, I should say, if you want to point that radar at something that you're interested in, you have to physically move the antenna, whether that's rotating it uh, this way or rotating it up and down, right? Azimuth, and up. Azimuth is this way, and elevation is, is uh, this way, all right. Uh, so you would have to rotate the antenna somehow, physically rotate it, okay, using typically electric motors of some sort. Uh, now, a phased array radar or phased array antenna is uh, something that's quite a bit newer. Well, I guess these days it's 2021, so it's not quite a bit newer, uh, but it's newer. Uh, instead of having to physically move the antenna, uh, the antenna itself is made up of a bunch of little radiating elements which are basically small little antennas, all right? They're called radiating elements, a bunch of those little elements, all right? And by performing some electronics stuff in the background, uh, you can steer, you can have the antenna, you can steer the radio signal um, wherever you want to put it, generally speaking, uh, within limits, of course, all right? So let's uh, take a look at uh, how it works. So let's take a look uh, to start off with something called an omnidirectional antenna. And these are the ones that you, uh, the types that you see, like for example, in your car, the, the antenna that sticks up. That's an omnidirectional antenna, all right? And here is kind of a side view of it, sort of, kind of. The blue here is the antenna itself, okay, sticking up. And these black uh, circles around it represent the representative of the radio waves that are leaving the antenna, all right? It's kind of like when you put, you, you drop a, a, a little rock or you drop something into a, a pond or some other water, and you see the, the waves as you're looking from the top, they ripple away. Uh, that's kind of how that is, it's supposed to represent that type of effect, okay? These are radio waves, and they're moving away from the antenna. And as they move away from the antenna, they're spreading out, okay? So this is what's called an omnidirectional antenna. And uh, for radar, typically what we will use is a directional antenna, okay? And the easiest way uh, to make a directional antenna is you just put a reflector of some sort on one side of the, uh, the antenna itself, all right, the radiating element, okay? And uh, as you see here, um, these radio waves are radiating away from this central uh, element here, okay? Or you could just call it the antenna. If you want, and the whole thing is the antenna, but you could call it a little radiating element of the antenna if you'd like, okay? Uh, so now there are several ways that this can be implemented, okay? This is with one radiating element, kind of traditional, what I was talking about before, okay? If we wanted to uh, 
to look at something that was not in in a in you know a specific cone of, of interest, I guess you if you want to call it that, uh, you would with this uh, type of arrangement you have to turn the whole thing. So you have to you know turn this this way or that way or whatever, okay, and steer it that way mechanically. All right, but there is a way that you can do that. Again, it's a phased array. And we're going to, what we're going to look at here is uh, linear arrays, all right? But we're going to start with a antenna that is made up of two radiating elements, okay? And just to get a general idea of how they work. So here we have, it's the same type of thing as this, okay? But there's two radiating elements, all right? And they're spaced a certain uh, distance from each other. Now this distance can vary on, on a whole lot of factors, a bunch of different factors. Um, in this particular example, as you can see here, I've marked it as the wavelength. The spacing between these two elements is, is equal to the wavelength of whatever frequency we're using, all right? And uh, let's just say for this particular example, we're going to be uh, using a frequency of 430 megahertz. Uh, so that will give a wavelength of uh, 0.7 meters, all right? So the distance between these two radiating elements is 0.7 meters, okay? Uh, now, Let's go over here real quick uh, to kind of talk about, to just briefly review sine waves or waveforms and, and their uh, phasing, okay? In black, I have drawn here a, a sine wave, just one cycle of the sine wave, okay? Now this could be a radio wave or whatever, all right? And then as you can see, I've drawn these marks here in purple. Uh, one of them is at 90 degrees which is right here, goes through this point. One is 180 degrees, which goes through this point, and one is at 270 degrees. Now this isn't gonna be an in-depth discussion of phasing, uh, it's just a refresher. Uh, and here I've drawn an orange, in orange another wave. Now this wave is 90 degrees out of phase from the black wave here, okay? Now how do I know that? Well, this wave starts its cycle here, above at zero, it starts increasing in amplitude at uh, right here, okay? Uh, now this one, this orange wave, it starts increasing its amplitude above zero. Well, once it reaches zero, which is here, the amplitude starts increasing uh, at this point, which is the 90 degree point, okay? So this orange wave is 90 degrees out of phase with this black wave, okay? And of course, this is the amplitude I've marked here of these two waves. This is the positive, this is negative down here. Uh, also, the wavelength, uh, just because we're going to use it later, uh, the wavelength is equal to the speed of light, which you see there, uh, divided by the frequency of whatever we're using. Okay, in this case it's 430 megahertz, and that's how you, you get the uh, 0.7 meters. And the time it takes, this is zero, assume this is time zero right here, and time whatever, it doesn't, we don't know, uh, the time is equal to 1 divided by the frequency, okay? So the time it takes for uh, this to make one complete cycle is equal to 1 divided by whatever the frequency is. I'm not going to calculate it out. It's uh, 1, for our example, 1 divided by 430 million, and that's pretty, pretty small, okay? Uh, so anyway, that is uh, phasing, all right? Now for this example, what we're going to look at is that these two radiators are fed a, an RF, a radio frequency, a RF signal, and, and, and the signal at each of these is, uh, is in phase, okay? The, the signal here is in phase with the signal there. So that means both, for example, both of these waves will be black, all right? Right here, these, these waves are both, uh, you could view them as the black signal there, okay? Now, if we look at these uh, circles as if they were at a time period, for example, let's just say at time period zero, the front of the wave, which you could, any point of this wave, you could call the front of the wave, but I'm going to call this point the, the front of the wave here, um, because that's the front of where it's rising, all right? Uh, at uh, time zero, for example, if you want to call it time zero, the, the wave front, or well, this would be time zero, but whatever. The time we take when we're first going to measure and look at this while it's transmitting, um, the wave front is here, okay, of, of the first wave. 
on this side, and the wavefront on this side is there as well. You notice that they're equal in size, okay? Uh, and then let's say we come back a little bit later and we look at the wavefront, okay? We see that the wavefront has moved out here, all right, and here. And they're still equal, but you see this little, they're connected now, all right? So this means they're going to, the amplitudes are going to reinforce each other, all right? And uh, then the third time we come and look, we see something that looks more like this. And you'll notice that this is getting flattened out a little bit here. Um, and so uh, basically this is going to be the strongest point. The, the, uh, more, most of the RF energy is going to be concentrated here. Uh, and this is due to uh, wave interference, you know, both destructive interference and constructive interference. Uh, the destructive interference is going to cause the waves to cancel each other out. All right. So a fully positive and added to a fully negative will create zero. Uh, a fully positive added to a fully positive will basically, if they're equal, they'll double that, that amplitude, okay? And then everything in between that is a, uh, you can go between that, okay? From zero to uh, maximum amplitude, and then amplitude could be maximum, maximum positive or maximum negative, okay? So what's happening here is we have maximum amplitude between these two uh, radiators because the, the, um, the signals being fed to them are the same frequency and they're the same phase and in this case the same amplitude, all right? So what these uh, uh, dashed lines up here represent is what we would consider the, uh, the strongest part of the wave as it's propagating from the antenna. Now this would be called a beam, okay, or you could call it a beam. Uh, so it's going to be limited to this area, or I should say something like this, all right? Now the angles aren't exact, but it's going to be limited. The strongest part of the signal is going to be limited, okay? So if you're, let's say on this side, you're not really going to see much over here. And if you're on this side, you're not going to see much over here. But if you're here, you'll see a strong signal or stronger signal, okay? Now, uh, if we were to pick, look at this a different way, uh, take this here, and draw it this way, you can see that this is uh, our main uh, signal here, okay? This is our beam, okay? Kind of like a laser beam, sort of, the, the word. Uh, so this is our main beam, okay? And this is where most of the radio energy is, is focused. And it, it, of course, it'll continue expanding out as it moves out. Uh, and then what you'll see here is these two things in purple, these are called side lobes. Uh, this is system, uh, this stuff isn't perfect, so what you'll get is a little bit of bleed over on the outside of this, all right? And sometimes you might have another bleed over over here, okay? But these are called uh, the main beam uh, and the, the uh, side lobes there, okay? So let's take a look at uh, something uh, with a few more radiators uh, next. Taking a look at uh, the linear array, we're going to expand that to five radiators, all right? Five little elements. Uh, and I've done that here. We have, we're going to be feeding in a signal, an RF signal, okay, to these radiators. The dots are radiators, all right? Uh, we're going to be feeding it in, and between each one of these radiators, there's going to be some sort of delay. Doesn't matter what it is, there is just a delay. And that, when you delay that signal, you're going to come up with something like this, where you have things out of phase, okay? When you delay the RF signal between each of these two, uh, what you're going to get is uh, each of these will be out of phase to some extent to the one before it, to the one, well, to all of them, to all the previous ones. Uh, now, some of them may align and, and be in phase, but that's, we'll, we'll cover that. Well, we don't need to cover that, actually. So if we were to look at this, when the radio uh, signal first comes in, when the waveform comes in, okay, when the RF energy comes in here, this has no phase shift, all right? So we'll call this at time zero. We take a measurement and we see the, the waveform is right here, okay? It's, it's, the RF energy is right there. That's where the waveform is, okay? Then we pause uh, for however long, and we'll come down to time, time uh, period or time instant one, okay? At time one, uh, what we've done here is there's no longer RF energy going into this one, but that RF energy has moved through the phase uh, 
excuse me, phase delay here, and now it's being radiated out of this element here, okay? And you can see that this, from the first element, has expanded out a little bit more, okay? The, the radio, the RF energy has traveled out a little bit more. At, at the first phase, it was uh, closer to this end, uh, radiating element, and now here it has moved out further away, okay? Uh, and then we also see that this element has started to radiate as well. And notice that this one is the same size as the one back here, okay? The, uh, uh, how far it is radiated away when we have observed it. And you'll notice that I've drawn here the dashed lines. This is where the, the signals would, or the RF energy would have went, okay? The wave fronts where they would be. But uh, there's some interference there. So what you're starting to get is a flattened out, almost kind of like a flattened out directional uh, movement of this wave front, all right? It's no longer going just this way or all the way around. The energy is starting to be focused instead of straight up. It's starting to focus towards the right here, okay? It's starting to be directed towards the right, all right? Or I should say, okay. Uh, now we wait a little bit longer and we go down to time two. We see that our the energy, the RF energy from our first radiator, our uh, first element here, has moved out even further. Okay, the wave front is further out. Uh, same thing with the second, uh, uh, the energy uh, from the second uh, element here has moved uh, further out as well. And for our third element, the uh, RF energy has, or I should say, the uh, signal uh, that we're feeding this has moved through another delay and is now being transmitted out of this element here. And of course it's going to be the same as, as uh, this was and this was. It's just moved over, okay? And of course that means it's, it's since it's went through a phase delay, it's a phase difference, okay? Uh, and then, so it should become more evident now that we have a, a wave front that, that is being, uh, the, the, most of the energy is being directed in a wave front that's moving this way, okay? Rather than one that's moving straight up. Okay, or even that way, especially not that way, all right? And you'll see here again, I've drawn the uh, dotted lines to where these, uh, uh, these, uh, where they would be if, if they were single, all right? And, and no interference was happening. Again, interference always isn't always bad. There's constructive and destructive. And even, uh, did I say destructive? Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter because you, you can use both types of that interference to your advantage. Sometimes uh, one is more important than the other, okay? Uh, depending on the application you're trying to do, all right? Or you're trying to build. So let's say we pause again and we look at this thing at time three, all right? Our uh, energy from the first uh, element here has moved even further out. Uh, the same thing for the energy from the second element here, all right? And then from the third element has moved out again, and of course, the uh, the signal has went through another phase delay here. Uh, and keep in mind, all these phase delays are done typically with uh, well, they're obviously done with electronics, but I'm not going to go into how those actually work um, because there's a se several different methods. Uh, and so we went through another phase delay here with uh, our original signal, our our RF feed. All right, and it is coming out of the radiator there, and of course, we've, we've seen this, this is a pattern now, right? Uh, and of course, we've drawn the uh, dotted lines here again, uh, where these would be without any interference. So, it is certainly looking like we've got something going here, going this direction, okay? Not much going that way, and certainly not much going this way. Uh, now, time for, time period for, which is the final one we're going to look at, uh, we can see the same thing. Uh, this is the first one out here. The, the uh, RF energy from the first radiator has moved quite a, quite a bit out. From the second radiator uh, has also moved quite a bit out. Uh, from the third here and from the fourth, of course. And uh, now the fifth one has, is, is active. It's, it's uh, radiating the uh, energy uh, after going through a phase delay, of course. And uh, so if we take a look at that, what we can see is we could just approximate that it looks like there's going to be a, some sort of uh, RF signal that is, or a beam that we formed 
that it's going to go out this way, okay? And of course, this isn't accurate. This is just a pictorial, uh, just an example, okay? For all I know, it could be going that way, whatever. Um, or even this way. Um, we'll get to that later with the math uh, next. Um, and so we see that the beam is going to be centered here, probably, and maybe, I don't know, go out like this. Who knows? It, that, that's a, a characteristic of, of how the antenna is built and controlled, all right? But we see that without moving this, without moving the antenna itself, what we've done is we've electronically taken the beam from going, there most of the energy from this antenna from moving this way, all right, to moving at an angle that is offset from uh, the way the antenna itself is pointing, okay? Uh, so that's the, the very basic part of the phased array. Um, uh, how it works, okay? Uh, next we're going to go into a little more math and maybe some more waveforms, perhaps, I don't know. Uh, and uh, go into a little more depth to see uh, what's going on with this and how to calculate uh, some of these things. Now it's time to get down into some math, which a lot of us, including myself, don't particularly like, but you got to do what you got to do, right? So let's start by taking a, uh, another brief look at uh, phasing uh, with waveforms. Uh, so we're going to go up here to this area here. Uh, and kind of like before, I've drawn two uh, wave, waves here. Uh, one is in orange, all right? And the other one is in black. Okay, and ignore the pink one there for a moment. Uh, this one in orange is the first one. It's basically, this is leading, all right? Uh, because you notice that it peaks here before uh, the one in, drawn in black does, all right? Uh, and so this one, this uh, uh, black wave, it is uh, lagging the orange wave. It's, it's following the orange wave. Uh, it's got a 90 degree lag, uh, phase lag, all right? <clears throat> uh, now, what's going to happen when these, these two waves uh, meet in, in real space, in, in the real world, in, instead of on a board, uh, is they're going to interact with each other, okay? And they're going to, their amplitudes are going to add, okay? Uh, so in this case, as the orange wave comes up, it hits a peak uh, at one unit. We could say it's one volt, one watt. We don't really care. It's just one unit, all right? Uh, and then it starts to go back down. Okay, so it's peaking at, at the 90 degrees phase here, all right? Uh, now the black one, it starts to come up, and it hits zero at 90 degrees phase, and then it'll come up here, uh, this is 135, I don't remember what it is. It's, uh, it's uh, three, 3 pi over 4 is what it is. Um, and so then it'll intersect with this uh, orange wave, all right? And then it'll peak at 180 degrees and start moving back down. Now when they interact, as I said before, their amplitudes are going to add to each other. So here at point A, the amplitude is uh, 0 0.0707, okay? Again, it doesn't matter what units are, there could be volts, watts, amps, we don't really care, all right, uh, for this example. So it peaks at the phase is 3 pi over 4, whatever degrees that is. I think it's 135. Um, and uh, the amplitude of it is at 0 0.707 for both of these waves. So they'll add to each other. That's going to, uh, as we see here, uh, it's going to be a total of 1.414, but I should have went over, went over something here. This orange wave is sine x. It, that's just just sine x is what, what, what that orange uh, wave represents, okay? X is whatever. Uh, now this black one is, uh, it represents sine x uh, minus pi over 2. And uh, pi over 2 is uh, another way of just simply saying 90 degrees, okay? Uh, so, and then the pink wave here, or the pink uh, equation here, represents the pink wave. And this is the sum of these... Uh, two other waves here, of the orange and the black one, all right? And as you can see, uh, here at 0.707, uh, where these two waves intersect, uh, it's at uh, 1.414. Likewise, when you come down to the negative end here, the negative half, at uh, point B, 
these, uh, the uh, orange wave and the black wave are both at negative point seven oh seven one yada 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 again. Okay, except that, or I should say, uh, the same as the, the positive wave, just negative instead of positive, right? Same same amplitude, just in uh, the other direction. Uh, so when we look at the pink wave, or the the uh, yeah the pink wave here, and what happens when they uh, uh, interfere with each other when these uh, two other waves interfere with each other what we get is an addition of their amplitudes and we get a, a one negative 1.414 okay uh, and this is going to happen all throughout the the, uh, the cycle here okay and I just picked these two points because they're the easiest to do all right if we look here um, right here where this is zero where it crosses where the pink wave crosses zero we'll see that the black wave and the orange wave are about equally distant. They're about equidistant from uh, uh, the zero axis here, all right? So if you add, to the, add the positive to the negative, you'll get zero, which is what this is telling us. And the same thing over here. And like I said, it continues all throughout the waveform, all right? Uh, and so if we remove these in our minds, we remove these these uh, two waves here, the orange wave and the, uh, and the black waveform, uh, what we're left with is this pink one, all right? And we can imagine that this thing is traveling through space, all right, this way, for, for this per particular example, all right? So this thing is traveling this way through space. Uh, it's got a little bit of a, a boosted amplitude here. Uh, other, it's the same frequency as, as these other two waves are, all right, because these other two waves are the same frequency. Uh, so that's about, I mean, th that's it for phasing as far as it, it, it is uh, from this perspective, all right? I just wanted to go over that because that was a little bit of, a little bit important, all right? Uh, so let's move on to the other side of the board here uh, into some geometry that's, uh, in my mind, a little bit easier to understand uh, for this phased array stuff. Now let's take a look at uh, the more ge geom geometric, geometry-based stuff here. Because uh, I'm not, I don't particularly like math myself. Uh, I have to use it. If I can do something geometrically and learn it that way, I prefer it that way. We're going to do, as you can see here, we're going to do a little bit of derivation, but I'm going to try to do most of the, the stuff uh, geometrically, all right? So let's get started here. Uh, here we have A and B. These are two radiating elements in an antenna, okay? And this line here, uh, the connecting A and B, well, they're, it's not connecting them, but behind A and B, that, like this, this line here, this blue line, uh, you can think of that as the reflector, all right? So A and B are, are two radiating elements, and feeding those, we have some RF, okay? Our RF comes through here, it goes through a splitter, uh, and comes up to A, and then it also goes through this device here, which is some sort of a phase delay device, all right? And then it comes over here and up through B, okay? And when, when the RF comes in, uh, what happens is it goes here, comes, some of it gets uh, thrown out uh, or routed through the splitter uh, and routed to the, uh, this element here, element A, and it'll get radiated out in a cir circular uh, fashion, all right? And uh, the other portion of the RF will come through here uh, go through a phase delay device, come out of there after some time. Um, it doesn't have necessarily have to be time, it could be a phase that, well, never mind, I'm not going to. After some period, okay, uh, and then it goes up through to uh, element B and gets radiated out, okay. Uh, now the phase delay through here is variable, it could be zero, it could be whatever, okay. Um, and between each of these, between now uh, these two elements here, these two radiator elements, we have a distance d here in pink. We'll just call that d, okay? And here in green, what we've got is uh, basically the, the direction that this thing will naturally take, uh, the, 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 the uh, RF energy will naturally tend to radiate towards uh, most or the, uh, the majority of it, the uh, uh, strongest signal you'll get. Um, if there is no phase delay between these two elements, okay, the RF energy will just go out that way. It'll go up straight up, okay? Uh, now, that's the mechanical uh, direction, all right? 
What this orange line here is, is the electrical direction. This is what, what, when we get into the steering part, this is uh, uh, represent, uh, represents a wave front, okay? I, I could have done one here horizontally for a wave front, but I just I didn't do it. Uh, so this will represent a wave front at whatever angle we, wanna, we want to put it out at, at I should say, okay? Um, you can call this the mechanical bore sight. You can call this one the electrical bore sight, whatever. Um, but this is the wave front here, okay? Uh, and then down here, we've got a couple angles right here, okay? Uh, this angle is the one we're concerned about. Uh, this one is here uh, basically just to say, hey, we're, because we're going to use it, uh, but uh, this is the one that we're going to use to, that we're going to uh, assign a, a, a value to, okay, a numeric value. Now, here in purple, we have uh, a line, and you can see that this line uh, extends from A, uh, from uh, uh, element A, to the, fr uh, to the wave front, all right? Uh, and there are 90 degree angles formed on both sides here, on both sides of this line. And I should have also mentioned that this uh, uh, electrical wavefront is uh, going down towards uh, element B, okay? And this is kind of important, uh, the way this is set up, all right? Uh, so this angle here, uh, like I said, it's the one we're going to specify. So let's say if we wanted to point the antenna at 45 degrees, or I'm sorry, not point the antenna, Point the beam at 45 degrees. Well, we would do that's what would be put here. Okay, we have 45 degrees put there. It could be 30 degrees, one degree, whatever. All right. But it's important to notice that we have two triangles here. We have uh, this one and this one, and there are both. They are both right triangles. Okay. Uh, so what do we have here? We have a. Oh, yeah, this is our phase delay. This is the required phase delay. This is what we're trying to calculate with this, all right? Uh, we're going to go with the angle. This is the angle we want to point the beam right here, okay? L is the distance the wave needs to... So this is the distance the, the, uh, the wave that is uh, emitted from uh, radio, uh, element A has to travel before uh, B starts to radiate or, or transmit that RF power, okay? Uh, so yeah, L is the distance the wave needs to travel before B transmits, okay? So by the time the RF energy gets to this point, B should be transmitting. Or I should say when the RF energy gets to this point here, this intersection right up here, B needs to transmit in order to steer it the, pro the, the, uh, the wave front the proper direction where we want it to go. Okay, so we, we're going to have to figure some stuff out here, all right? We need to know the length of this purple line. Uh, the only information that we have, though, we have D, the distance between A and B, so that's, this is a hypotenuse of, of one triangle here, uh, and we have an angle right here, okay? What we need to find out is this one, this uh, lower angle here. How can we find that out? Well. Uh, we know that this is going to be a right angle here as well, okay? So what we can do is we can do some flipping around of numbers. Uh, so we know if we add these two angles together, it must be 90 degrees. And we know that this angle here, all right, the value of this angle is uh, cosine, because what we're doing is the adjacent or the hypotenuse. You remember your Sakatoa from school? S O H C A H T O A? Opposite over right, yeah, Sakatoa. Uh, so what you're going to do is cosine uh, of this, uh, the length of this uh, uh, leg here, over the high, divided by the length of the hypotenuse, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, well, the length of the hypotenuse in this is, is D, okay? Uh, so you'll get this right here. This is what you get for, for that. And then if we do some shuffling around, what we can understand is uh, this is equal to the cosine of 90 minus the angle there, all right? Uh, and that's going to be equal to, to this one. And then what we can do is we can translate this into something else and use this 
And what we'll come up with is the length of this, we can actually find the length of this now, the length of this is equal to uh, the distance here multiplied by the, uh, the sine of this angle here that we already know, the angle that we know, okay? Pretty easy so far. That's probably the hardest derivation out of all of this, all right? Um, so, this is the, the length, like I said before, that the RF has to travel before this element transmits, okay? Is there another way that we can look at this? Well, there's also a time associated with the travel from A, from the radi uh, radi uh, uh, element A, to this point out here. There's a time associated with that. We can figure out the time, because uh, we know the speed of light, okay? Uh, so if we know the length of this, we can figure out the time of travel. How do we do that? Well, we can say t, which we haven't drawn up here because we don't need it up, up there. Uh, t is going to be the time uh, to travel uh, across L, all right? And so we can see uh, if we take the length of this and divide it by the speed of light, which is 300 million, it's a little less than that, 299, yeah, but we're going to use 300 million because it's easy. Nice, it's a nice round number, except the three that's there. I hate three. Um, anyway, uh, so the time is equal to the length of, of uh, this line here divided by the speed of light. All right. Now what's interesting is if we, since we already know what the length is equal to, we can substitute what the length is equal to into this equation here, okay? So what we can do is we can replace the length here, L, with this value here, okay? And that's what I've done down here, all right? Uh, we can calculate the time by moving this here, this value here, there, and dividing it by the speed of light, okay? Now, the time delay, what we need in here, uh, in this time delay device, uh, can be expressed in terms of the phase delay, okay? And that's going to be equal uh, to 2 pi uh, times the time, multiplied, not times, 2, mi 2 pi multiplied by uh, the time, okay? And then that's divided by the wavelength, okay? This is getting kind of crazy, perhaps. But it, it's easy once you get your head around it, all right? This is, for me, it's kind of hard. I'm kind of hard to explain math for myself, so, you know, I hate math. Anyway, uh, actually, the funny thing is I actually do like math. I just don't. It's one of those love-hate relationships. Anyway, um, all right, so we've got that the, the, uh, the, the uh, phase delay is equal to 2 pi multiplied by t all divided by the wavelength, okay? Now, we know t, right? We know what t is. It's this whole thing here, okay? And since we're expressing it in, with a, a, a wavelength here, what we can do is uh, we can just copy that, put this here, and 2 pi, we'll, we'll get 2 pi times, or uh, multiplied by d up here, okay? Uh, that multiplied by the angle here that we want to, we know the angle, that the angle that we want to point, divided by the wavelength of our frequency that we're using, all right? So that's it for this particular uh, thing. Now we're going to go through an example and uh, check our work as well. So now let's check, uh, uh, figure out an example and check our work, all right? Suppose, uh, ignore this, suppose you ignore that, we're going to be working from here now. Suppose that we have a, an antenna system made up of two radiating elements, all right? Uh, they are 0.175 meters apart, okay? Um, we want to point the beam at 45 degrees, okay? Which is going to be this here. And we know the angle there is 45 degrees, okay? Now our frequency, because we're going to need to know the frequency to figure this out. Remember, we've got wavelengths over here, okay? So we're going to need to know the frequency. The frequency is going to be about 430 megahertz, and the wavelength of that frequency will be uh, about uh, 0.7 meters, or 0.7 meters if you want to say it that way. 
uh, and our angle that we're going to be trying to point this thing is going to be 45 degrees. However, with this, we don't work in degrees, we work in radians, all right? We can express 45 degrees as pi over 4 radians, all right? Uh, now, we know this angle here is going to be, uh, well, we can calculate that out, can't we? Oh, look. 90 minus 45 is pi over 4 radians. How convenient. I like round numbers. Anyway. Uh, all right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use the equation that we just looked at uh, to figure out uh, this angle. Uh, I'm sorry, the delay. The delay here. All right. That's what we're trying to figure out is the delay from A to B, all right, the phase delay. So we've got 2 pi, hopefully I can, yeah, well, that's covered, okay, doesn't matter. You can see it, you can observe it, uh, just rewind a little bit. So we've got 2 pi, okay, multiplied by the distance here between our two radiate, radiating elements, which is, elements, which is uh, 0.175, and this is all in meters, okay, at least as far as the dimensions are concerned. We're using meters and seconds, okay? Uh, multiplied by our, uh, uh, what is this, our 45 degrees right here, okay? Uh, and then divided by uh, our wavelength, which is 0.07, okay? Now, if we simplify this, what we get is... Uh, this whole thing here is equal to the square root of 2 multi uh, multiplied by pi, divided by all that, divided by 4. That's going to give us a phase delay of 11.11 radians, or 63.6 .6 degrees. So this is kind of interesting. If I want to aim this, this beam here at a 45 degree angle in this particular system, I have to have a 63.6 .6 degree, now remember this is electrical, this is not physical. I have to have a 63.6 .6 degree phase difference. Well, that's kind of odd. We'll get into that in a moment, or a few moments, I guess, because we're going to check. We're going to check this answer here, okay, because you might say, well, 60, why isn't it just 45 degrees? Why, that, I mean, that would make sense, right? If, phase, if I want to aim the darn thing at 45 degrees, I should have to aim it at 45 degrees electrically, right? Remember, we're talking about... This is the mechanical direction that the wave is going. This is the electrical phase delay. This is an electrical thing here, all right? So let's calculate, let's check our work. All right, so what is the length of this? The length of this is uh, uh, 0.175. We're, what we're doing is we're taking our length from here. Uh, where's our length? Uh, do, 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 right here. This is our length. This is what we're figuring out right here, okay? Our length is the distance here multiplied by this angle up here, all right? Uh, and that's going to be at about 0.124 meters. It's actually a little less, 0.123, which is going to show up here. Uh, you could, some of you can probably already see it. It's going to show up later, but if you, if you do the numbers exactly with a calculator, uh, it'll come out, you know, like it should. This is 0.1239, whatever. It's rounded up to 0.124 meters. So this is 0.124 meters, okay, uh, and this is 0.175 meters. So what this is telling us is that in order for us to get a 45 degree, uh, a wave front that is 45 degrees this way from our center line, all right, uh, we're going to have to, uh, this will end up uh, being the length, uh, the wave will have to travel 0.124 meters from here to here, all right, before we can turn on or before we can transmit from B, okay? Hopefully I made that clear. The, let, me, let me state it again. The wave radiating out from A will have to travel uh, 0.124 meters across L here, okay, before we can let B start to transmit in order to get this 45 wavefront at a 45 degree angle like we want. All right, so hopefully that's clear. Uh, so if we know the length, uh, what do we need to figure out next? Well, we can check our work here. Let's check it. I want to see if this uh, angle here, okay, matches the length here that we just calculated 
uh, divided by the hypotenuse. They should match or come very close if our work was correct so far. So what we have here is the uh, cosine of this angle here, which is, is pi over 4, all right, it's 45 degrees, uh, is equal to uh, 0.124 divided by 0.175. And that is uh, the cosine of uh, 45 degrees is uh, 0 0.707. And this uh, division here is 0 0.708. So they're about equal. Now, uh, like I said, if, if, what you can do is you can take this value here, uh, right here, and plug that in here on top of the uh, upstair, upstairs right there instead of 0.124. And what you'll get is you get 0.7071 equals 0.7071, yada, yada. You get an exact answer, or relatively exact. So they're equal, all right? Now, what we, that checks out. So we, we can, okay, we're probably doing good, right? We don't have any mistakes so far. But we need to figure out the time that, that it's going to take for that signal, that, that RF, to travel this distance, okay, to travel 0.124 meters, all right? And that's fairly simple. You just divide the distance by the speed of light. And if you do that, you get the, a time to travel from A to up here to this point over distance L, which is 0.124 meters, is about 413.3 picoseconds. It's very small, very tiny, all right? Now, can we convert this time to a time delay or a phase delay? Yes, we can. That's simply done by uh, multiplying uh, uh, 2 pi times the frequency. You've got to multiply that by the frequency. And then you multiply that by uh, the time that you have, OK? So we know our frequency is uh, 430 megahertz. There you go, 2 pi times 430 million. Uh, then multiply that by 413.3 uh, picoseconds, and you magically get 1.11 radians, all right? Which matches up here, okay? Now, what you can do with this uh, 413 picoseconds is you can think of this, this uh, delay here, this is a time, all right? It's a time. You could think of that as the RF will have to come into A and it gets transmitted out immediately. Then it moves over here and 413 picoseconds later it gets transmitted out of B. That's one way you could look at this phase delay. Uh, that's not necessarily how it's done all the time. It's just one way that you could think of it. All right? So hopefully uh, I didn't confuse you too much with this video. Uh, and hopefully it helped you out with uh, some of the basics of phase delay. Uh, I think I'm going to probably, I might do some... Uh, additional videos about it in the future more complex, I don't know. Uh, but this is the basic idea of it all, okay? Uh, what you can do with this stuff is you can bury the amp, if you've got uh, more of these uh, uh, radiating elements in the antenna, you can vary the amplitude of each one uh, and form your being even better that way, okay? Uh, you can get uh, you can not necessarily get rid of your side lobes, and we talked about the side lobes a little bit, uh, but you can knock down the amplitude of them a little bit. You can uh, do a little more beam forming stuff with, by messing with the amplitude as well as the phase delays. Uh, so anyway, uh, like I said, hopefully that helped you out, uh, and uh, thanks for watching.